K-State linebacker Austin Moore with us now. We have talked to Hadley Panzer, who all of a sudden has found himself going very quickly from being considered a young guy to an old mm -hmm. guy. Are you just a straight-up old guy <laughs> now, or what's this like for I'm you? I'm actually the oldest guy, so, yeah, I'm definitely an old guy for sure. Uh, with everything that, that went on last year, ends up being a pretty strong season, but you come up just shy of 10 wins. Mm -hmm. How much of what happened in the Iowa State game has kind of driven you guys this offseason going into next year knowing we're pretty good, but we still have something to prove? Uh, that definitely drives us. Uh, I talked about it with some other guys over there. Um, that's something you know we, we even think about just in the workouts, towards the end of the workouts when stuff's getting hard. Um, it's definitely a good motivator. So um, we know that we can be a great team, but we know obviously we, we can have bad games too. So we just don't want that to happen again. And um, it's definitely pushing us. Coach Kleiman came over here and he talked about the depth on the defensive line and the secondary is a really strong part of the defense right now. Mm -hmm. But we know that last year you guys took some hits seem like early on just week after week yeah. with with health and then this year how is the depth starting to develop and and what's it like with some of your other linebackers um i think we're really we got a lot of depth um at the linebacker i think um adding alec alec marenko is huge um he has a lot of a lot of experience and veteran leadership and he's fit right in in the locker room so i'm looking for him you know to have a big year and um des Purnell, is a guy who uh, I've said it a few times, he doesn't get nearly enough respect, and uh, I feel like he's going to have another huge year. He's stepping up as a leader. Um, we're, we're pushing each other back and forth, um, trying to make each other as best we can, and then Austin Romain has continued to improve too, so I'm excited for all those guys. Uh, what's something that you've done this offseason to really take your game to the next level? Um, I've really focused on uh, nutrition, I guess, more than I have in the past. Um, just not only just eating better, but making sure that I eat enough, especially like on the weekends when I'm away um, from the PT and from the meals that they give us, and uh, just trying to learn more about the other positions around me. Uh, Marquise and I have made it a goal of ours you know, during the season to meet together at least once just so we have an understanding of you know, what we're both thinking, what our responsibilities are, so we're not trying to do someone's job and then messing up our own job or vice versa. Uh, now there's 16 teams in the Big 12 and four new teams added in. K-State now is playing five teams in conference play that they haven't played before. So yeah. what, what's been the biggest challenge of that so far? Um, I mean, I don't know if it's, it's been a challenge necessarily yet just because we haven't got to play them, but there's definitely a lot of excitement uh, around it. Just seeing some of those places, getting to play in Boulder, uh, getting to play in Provo, and um, it's, it's definitely exciting. And it, it's kind of weird just going over there when they had that uh, college football thing, just seeing all the jerseys and being like, oh, yeah, they're in our conference. Like, it's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, so we'll, we'll go with the first fun one, and we'll – we're having everybody do an impression of their position coach, <laughs> so can you give us your best Coach Standard impression? Um, yeah, I mean, you can't see me standing up, but Coach Standard's kind of known for being like, uh, he played for Nebraska back in the late 80s, so he's had like his, both his knees replaced, his hips replaced, ankles replaced. He's always kind of like rubbing on his joints and moving back and forth. You can kind of tell like if it's going to be a good day or not based on how he walks in the room. If he's limping a little more, you know, you better be locked in or else you're going to get yelled at. Um, he likes to like slap his knee and slap and do snaps and stuff like that. So that's that's what I would say about Coach Standard. Uh, with with the linebackers and everything <laughs> that you guys have going on right there, what is the what is the toughest thing about being a linebacker in the Big Twelve? Because every league seems to have its own type of style, mm -hmm. and so each you know position will have its own difficulties. What to you is the thing that in the Big Twelve you think linebackers have the hardest time with? Um, I think that we have a lot of great running backs. And we got a lot of big running backs too, so you got to be able to tackle those guys. But you also have to be able to move, and because we have great quarterbacks as well, and you got to be able to drop in the pass coverage, and you got to be able to play man. So I think just having a uh, stuff stuff run game, and then also uh, play the pass game makes it really tough. With the running backs on your guys' own roster that you have seen throughout the spring and, and everything, uh, what's it like watching DJ Giddens and Dylan Edwards now together? Uh, it's dangerous. Um, that's where that comes to mind. I think uh, you know, everybody knows about DJ. That dude's a stud. Um, one of the strongest guys, um, not only in the weight room, but on the field, just trying to tackle him. I don't actually get to tackle him to the ground, but just feeling him, trying to wrap him up. And uh, Dylan Edwards just has a different speed, different burst to him that um, not everybody has. So it's going to be a, uh, definitely a dynamic duo for sure. Uh, you've been in this league a long time now, so who is the best player that you think that you've gone up against? Hmm. Uh, I don't know who, who I would pick. I guess I, I think I would have to say Bijan probably. Um, that he was a stud and um, just the size and speed and elusiveness that he had. Um, 
I probably have to say Bijan. Uh, I just got to thinking about this because I, I saw him over there again. We know this year that you guys on the sidelines during the game are going to be able to get the video to the tablets and mm-hmm. then also uh, the in-helmet communication. It, do you know how that will work and, and how defensively that's going to work out for you guys? Yeah, we've practiced it a little bit. Um, we did it in spring ball. Um, we kind of took turns. Sometimes I would have it. Sometimes Austin Romain or just other people. Uh, Coach Klanerman would just give it in, give him the signal. So. We don't know exactly like when it's going to cut off and all that. We haven't practiced that, but um, it's definitely interesting, and I, I kind of like it almost better than having a signal. It makes other people uh, have to listen more and communicate. So, um, so far, it's been pretty cool. So you like it, and, and do you, will it be you then? You think that has it? Um, I imagine, but I know that they haven't. I don't know if they for sure finalized if it's going to be one person or multiple people. So um, I think pr- I'll probably end up having it though. Uh, in terms of kind of you know looking around and seeing the other pomp and circumstance of this, you talk about 16 teams. We, you know, we're in Vegas instead of Arlington. You've gotten to do Big 12 Media Days in Arlington and Vegas. Mm. Uh, do you have a preference on Vegas or Arlington? I didn't actually go to the Media Day last oh. year. For some reason, everyone, everyone, no, you're not the only person. Yeah, I'm like trying to think. I, 20 people think that I went. For some reason, I, I thought that you were there. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, but um, I, I wasn't even there last year. I was there in 21. So yeah. Um, no, I, I love Arlington. I think this this place is awesome too, but I think I like AT&T Stadium just a little bit better. And I guess Vegas, you're not getting to do anything while you're here. Yeah, so that's true. If you were able to, would you be <laughs> interested in that, or is it not really your um, speed? I would I would be a little interested. Um, I would check it out for sure. Your head coach said that he was a <laughs> Vegas guy back oh, yeah? in the day. So. Yeah, this is my first time being here, so I don't know if I'm a Vegas guy or not. But. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then the last thing that I'll, I'll throw your way, we've been talking about EA Sports College football. Uh, how excited are you to be involved in, in that game? I'm really excited. Um, I was kind of a big gamer like growing up and stuff like that, so it's just going to be cool to have myself, I guess, immortalized in a video game and just to play as myself be kind of cool. Have you been able to see your rating yet? Uh, I didn't personally see it, uh, so Brendan and uh, Avery got to play the game, but they were kind of telling us our ratings, and I think I'm an 84 overall. So, yeah, so you're, I mean, you're, that's pretty decent. Uh, Marquis said that he was an 86. Yeah. Uh, Hadley Panzer did not say his rating. so I, I, <laughs> I think, think he's 84, too. I'll, oh. I'll expose oh, him. Oh, yeah. well, well, <laughs> that's a good he, rating. He, yeah. he made it sound like he was like in the 70s. No, I think he's 84, yeah. Uh, so uh, who on offense uh, so far during like summer workouts and during the spring are some guys that have really popped and have given you guys some issues? Um, I mean, Dylan Edwards obviously has um, has looked really great out there. He's looked really fast. Um, Trey Spivey is somebody that I'm really high on. Um, I've been really high on him since he's ever come into the program. Um, I think uh, he has a ton of potential. Um, he's a big body, fast dude, has great hands. So I'm looking forward to him putting everything together and um, getting a whole season and hopefully being a, a big piece of that offense for us this year. Uh, a lot of position groups really do this as a, as their bonding activity, but mm. uh, you really see it with the linebackers. Who's the best fisherman among the linebackers? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, I don't know for sure who caught the most last year, but uh, I do know that Gavin Myers caught a giant fish, um, and he definitely caught the biggest one for <laughs> sure. So I guess I'd have to give the award to him yeah, for now. That, that tracks. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, one of the other things that's kind of unique for you is y- you've got a younger brother that's now starting to go through the kind of the recruiting process. Yeah. What is that like for you, not just as obviously somebody that's playing college football, mm-hmm. but just from the brother standpoint of getting to see, you know, your brother getting that recognition and starting yeah. to explore those opportunities? Uh, it's really exciting. Um, he's definitely getting a lot more recruited than I did uh, back in the day, so I'm almost living a little bit <laughs> through him. Uh, but, no, it's exciting. I can't wait. Uh I wish I could find a seventh year so I could play with him, but uh, I'm really excited for his future, and, um, yeah, it's just really exciting. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could try and find that seventh year for you, but (laughs) that would require probably some bad things happening. Yeah, let's not do that. You probably uh, don't want that. Okay. Uh, The final thing that we've let everybody do when they've come through here today is just give one other thing that people should know about K-State football in 2024. Okay. Um, I would say one thing. Uh, to know about us in 2024 um i think we're we're a young team but we got a lot of very mature guys and i think that this is going to be the year that we see a lot of new stars that are going to be around for years to come kind of emerge so i think this is going to be a year that people look back back to in the future awesome we appreciate it thanks appreciate you thank you